Welcome to Smart Branding, a podcast dedicated to branding, naming, and domain names. I'm Tatiana Bonneau, and with my guests, we try to help you create and grow strong, memorable, and meaningful brands online. I believe time is one of our most precious assets, and so I want to thank you in advance if you decide to spend the next 30 minutes with us. I promise to do my best to make those worth it. Let's go! So yeah, I guess tell me a little bit more, uh, more about about yourself. What do you do? What does your business do? Okay, so let's do a quick um, a, a, a quick uh, history of our journey, uh, mm -hmm. um, Tatiana. So um, Project Seasway, the not for profit company, was formed in 2013. Okay, it was formed by Alan Notcray, and um, what he saw is that the which still exists now is this this data inequality so mm -hmm. um only 10 percent of the homes in south africa have got got wi-fi um yeah. back then that wi-fi was provided by adsl now that wi-fi is provided by fiber um so all that's happened is that the wealthy 10 percent have had their lines upgraded and the other 90 percent are still effectively unconnected okay um mm -hmm. They, they do have access to the internet, but through mobile data, okay? Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're purchasing mobile data in the, in the small bundles that they purchase, it's literally between 50 and 100 times more for, for data than, than what the privileged 10% that have broad, fixed broadband or Wi-Fi in their homes pay. And mm. it's that inequality um, that we are out to fix um, as a... As a as a not-for-profit, it was that inequality that we were fighting against, um, that we were advocating the need for uh, fair data pricing between um, the different, if you like, classes of South Africa. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you have a situation where it, it, it's, it's incredibly expensive to be poor, you're, you know, you, you're creating a divide that is, it, and, and, um, that is unachievable for people to break out of out of mm. there and, and grow. So really that's the goal is to is to provide um, connectivity at a um, at a equitable price. So initially we went out for free Wi-Fi access points. Okay. Okay. Um, we got ourselves quite a bit of volume. The, the, the challenge with free is the sustainability. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then also what happened is um, at the beginning of COVID, we realized we were doing good. Um, you know, we've got 70,000 monthly active users on our networks, but we're not, that's not shifting the needle. We need, we need 30 million South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, to, to address the issue. And we felt that the only way to do that was to actually have a sustainable model that is based on making, um, making a profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> we effectively have a triple bottom line, okay, is, is, is one, we want to address this inequality issue. Two, we need to make a pro so we need to, we want to do good, but we want to make a profit while doing good. And three, mm -hmm. we want to enjoy it and have tremendous job satisfaction <laughs> while doing it. So that's our, that's our triple bottom line. Um, so for me, it's, it's about then trying to get this sustainable Wi-Fi um, happening. And what we've realized is that um, people are not that keen to pay for Wi-Fi in public access points, uh, mm -hmm. but they will pay mm -hmm. for Wi-Fi if it's in their home. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so as the for-profit company now, what we're doing is we're taking all of the concepts that we had with public Wi-Fi and we're actually deploying it in such a way that we can reach either a home or you know, preferably two or three homes with the deployments. Um, but have the charging mechanism on an equitable basis and a charging mechanism of what they actually have in their pocket. Mm -hmm. So even if you have, so if you like our five rand a day um, model uh, came up by saying, right, your average leafy suburb spends 600 rand on Wi-Fi a month, okay? And they've got a family of four, um, mm -hmm. so four devices, if you do the math, uh, you get to five rand a day per device, roughly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
so that that's where we said is like you know why can't we if that number works in the leafy suburbs and you've got a density of four times more in, at least in the in the um the lower income uh, uh, suburbs of south africa is is what you know we just challenge ourselves and say surely we can make this work now what what we feel is critical is that even when you get an equitable pricing you've also got to address well what have they got at any one time in their pocket to be able to pay okay. mm -hmm. and the problem is is that 600 rand a month as a one-off payment is also too high okay um but five rand a day per device is achievable so mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're rolling out five rand a day um wi-fi in into areas where there are there is no fixed broadband and we are aiming to get the um sustainability in place to achieve that wow. <laughs> that yeah. in a nutshell in a nutshell, yeah. that in a nutshell <laughs> is what we're up to <laughs> No, it sounds really interesting, and, and it also I think we we take it a bit for granted now that you know Western Europe you're walking around everywhere. It's like I, I think like probably the closest people can get to even remember what it is not to have access to the internet is like when they run out of battery or something, and there's like that, that yeah. panic. And we're talking about you know digital acceleration, how that has changed everything, and I completely forget that as you say that there, there, there's a lot a lot of people who who don't have that. And I, I can't even imagine, you know, the, the impact that has on, on people's lives. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So once, once, if you like, we've got that base level of infrastructure in place, then all the value adds that can be brought online can, mm. can come on top of us then, you know, and, and, and really what we're, what we're afterwards, after then is, you know, uh, collating the stories that, that actually how people have managed to change their lives as a result of yeah. of uncapped of uncapped internet so you know we 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 say we're writing a book because i think when you've got a mission and a purpose in mind it's always good to say right we're going to write a book about this and the title oh, yeah, of our book definitely. yeah the title of our book is called africa uncapped so, oh, nice. so so what we want to do is is create and, and, and the reason why uncapped is so important for us is because the moment you build data on a per gigabyte basis, you tend to be more frugal with it, okay? Yeah. Um, whereas when, it's, when you build, build on a time basis, you then tend to maximize the amount of use that you wanna get out of that data. So whether mm -hmm. it's you know, watching a film on Netflix or whether it's educating yourself um with uh, youtube or with online education mm -hmm. or whether it's you know making sure you apply for a job i mean so often people will be applying for a job and they'll run out of data mm. and then yeah. that's all lost and then they've got to repurchase a low load of data to apply for the job now if you have it on uncapped it allows people to do whatever they want to do and really maximize the benefits of being connected and there's Absolutely. there's there's two there's two aspects to the connection as well you know as, as we mentioned in south africa the 90 percent of homes are, are missing out on the on the internet on the on being connected to the world and the world's missing out on being connected to africa hmm. you know? yes that's, um, a, that's a huge thing as well i, I think yeah. generally the, the the internet as we see it is missing on a lot because of that, we, we were kind of presuming there's, you know, we're all there and it's actually, we, we, we're not, and that's a miss for everyone. Yeah. All right, so does, yeah. I think that, yeah, I think that officially sort of covers um, who we are and what we actually do, um, but happy to um, take yeah. any sort of further questions that you might have. Maybe one thing we should add, um, Tatiana, is that, the mechanism by which we're getting to the homes is we have a, have a toolbox of getting to them, okay? okay? So with high density homes, we're deploying fiber mm -hmm. to each home. Um, um, with the more, um, and, and what we're doing is we're doing wireless to the block and then fiber to the homes from that wireless connection. So we're getting high capacity wireless connections in. Um, other homes, we're going direct wireless um 
from public Wi-Fi access points. We're also then putting down home routers that can connect into the public access if you put them in the right place. Um, so really what we're doing is, is having this blended model of, mm -hmm. of really um, whatever is the most capital effective way, um, the most capital cost effective way of getting to our users, we will deploy that in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes what we'll do is we'll we'll lead with wireless and then we'll move the wireless equipment on as we put the fiber in behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, you're adapting to, to the particular situation. Yeah. Tell me about your name, the, the company name. How did you come up okay, with that? Okay, so the, the name is Seasway. It means um, a building a community or building a nation. Okay. Okay, nice. so what we're, what we're aiming to do with this is to uh, build our communities in an online environment now um, and, and uh, through it, you know, create all the benefits of being online that a, that a community can gain. Okay, I, I was wondering, I thought it's like, is, is we as a play on the one is everyone sort of a thing and it's actually, it's actually work. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a okay. it causal word, isn't it? That it, it could be used for both. It's yeah. more zulu, um, yeah. more zulu word, um, in South Africa. Yeah. Okay. And you you got the dot com domain name because th there's a lot of local extensions. I would imagine. Why did you go for a com? Uh, because of the because we are, the dot com is for the um, for profit company, okay, <laughs> and the. Um, dot co dot za is for the um uh, sorry the dot org is project is for the not-for-profit so oh, we you have the non -profit. okay yeah we yeah. still have the not-for-profit so that receives sponsorship to get connectivity out to the various locations that we're guided by the funder as to where we're going to to roll out to so the we reason why we went for dot com as well is because we want to roll this out once we've won at home we want to roll this out elsewhere, other African, sub-Saharan African countries. Mm -hmm. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Which obviously makes more sense than having a dot Sure. And you you are connecting homes, so individuals. How how do you go about, or do you at all work with like businesses, startups, some some sort of a yeah startup communities? Not really. We 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 are focusing completely on, if you like, ho a home product. Okay. Mm. What businesses are doing is they are using our product, obviously, to start up. You know, mm -hmm. um, and any startup business will use a home internet because generally it's cheaper. Um, so so through that, what we what we're aiming at is 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 blanket connectivity at a fixed rate and, and mm -hmm. an af affordable fixed rate. And, and really how people use that is, is then up, mm -hmm. up to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we, we do sort of look at partnering with corporate partners that might run some courses for local entrepreneurs. Um, and it obviously helps, um, particularly in these communities, um, enabling people to, you know, um, you know, study online, give courses online, um, and run some other yeah. online businesses. So there is quite a lot that we do, but it's probably more on a micro entrepreneurship level as opposed to like a more traditional tech startup and tech ecosystem mm -hmm. um, that you might see in, in say other markets. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. All right, um, what's next? What, what are you working on apart from the book that you mentioned? <laughs> that's, that's something exciting that you're looking forward to. So we're working in, in an area in South Durban called Amlazi and Lamontville. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a network there. And, and what's next is to expand that network. Okay. Um, we, we believe that the the, the revenues uh, will get stronger as you densify your network and you, if you like, completely Wi-Fi area uh, with full Wi-Fi coverage and area. Mm -hmm. 
So, so what we've got is we've got laser focus on this area um, to, to, and we're rolling out more and more access points in this area, um, making more and more people aware of it and, and really just getting it so the entire community, it's a community of about 6,000 homes, okay, that the entire community has got access points all over and all of their homes are covered. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we want to do from that, whether whether it's some of it's going to be fiber because they're really high density, some of it's going to be wireless. Um, what we want to do is then um, prove a model of how much revenue we're actually getting out of that area once mm -hmm. we've completely flooded it. Um, okay. And from that, we're aiming then to to show that uh, the revenues are there and that the it, you know create a rock solid investment model. Um, that, mm -hmm. that shows um, real um, real numbers instead of like theoretical numbers of a spreadsheet and a market research and they're paying this and they're paying that. We, we, we just want to get out and do, roll this area out and show that it's, it's, it's really working. And actually, um, I believe we can, once, we, we, once we've rolled that out, we'll have uncovered everything we don't know at the moment mm, um, and that yeah. and, and that's really our goal is to get a, a significant number of whole homes uh, connected and 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 absolutely understand everything we don't know yeah i, th I think maybe sort of from a long-term perspective um if you think about it south africa probably has just under two million homes that have access to free to sort of fixed broadband um, where in total there's still 14 million homes that are actually unconnected within the country. Yeah. So ultimately, our business is to create a sustainable um, business model, which we can then use to obtain um, DFI funding globally, so from the likes of CDC, IFC, DFC, and so on, um, which can then help us to ultimately, um, you know, have fixed broadband um, delivered to every home within South Africa, which is obviously our primary area of focus. Um, but I mean, you know, if, if, if you actually look at the rest of the continent, they actually do sort of face the same issue. So ultimately, mm -hmm. we would also want to um, expand to um, other markets. But at this stage, um, South Africa certainly is sort of the focus point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I can see, and that makes sense. You, you're starting with, um, you mentioned the 6,000 homes. So that's exactly, I guess, the smart thing to do to, as you said, a lot of things you, you don't even know can be an issue or can be, um, you know, some, some, you can uncover equally positive and negative sides and you can fix it much, much easier on that level when, when you're yeah. focusing on, on that area. That absolutely makes sense. Um, how do you reach your customers? All right. Yeah, just one last thing. If you look at the early 90s with mobile, 98% um, mm -hmm. of their revenue was monthly contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, globally. If you look now, probably only it's the other way around. Only 2% is, mm -hmm. is contract. The rest, India, Africa, is all pay as you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we believe the same thing's going to happen with fixed broadband. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's all, all the, the suppliers want to think about is monthly contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. What we want to prove is that actually the model is, is to go pay as you go, allow people to buy the internet as and when they need it at, a, at an equitable price, and that mm -hmm. we can prove the investment model, although... Um, it's, it's not got like, if you like, the safety of monthly fee. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it's got, we don't need any accounts receivable because it's cash up front uh, on, on small amounts. So we've, we've saved on all of that hassle of should I cut them off, shouldn't I? Should I cut them yeah, off? Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. 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 you know, if they if they've not fed the meter, they don't get on. So we all of yeah. that is cleared out of our business. Um, yeah. And, and we we are passionate about showing that um, this is the model to go. And, and and as I said, this 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 rollout in Lamontville and Mlazi area, it's it's great because it's low income areas. It's got fantastic capacity capability for us to be able to keep racking up the bandwidth in there as we need. 
Um, and you know, we we just. I think it's go... exponential as well. I mean, the, the better the better people do, the the more they'll spend time on the internet. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely, and we can see that they they're spending more and more time. It hmm. just. It's just like, um, how long does that take? How long does that ramp up graph take? And how do you actually pull it faster so that you're getting your revenues in sooner than maybe we were last year? So that, that's yeah. constantly what we're focused on and, and, and working on. Do yeah. you at all get involved in how people use the internet or for what do they use it? Because obviously for like I, I know we, as humans on anything I mean uh, like you can go back to the printing press and it was used for erotic magazines and the bible for super long time before we got to use it for science and other things so yeah. we're very you know what I mean it's like we we, we have I'm, I'm sure like people would look at kittens online and and I know Facebook and whatever and then at some point also use it for education and work and and yes. we obviously at any level anywhere and I would imagine in your case as well would prefer for people like I have four, four kids and you know the, the why they use the internet and why I want them to use it and how we manage that is something um, that we're like constantly battling with. Do you have any any involvement in that? Uh, it's such an interesting question because we actually do get asked this um, fairly often. Um, so whilst historically we have, um, you know, potentially considered having partners and, uh, and, 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 and it is something that we have explored, um, what we find is when the internet isn't necessarily new to people. So whilst they do have access currently to the internet, it's just limited because they have to use their mobile data. So largely people would, would have some level of base use, so i.e., you know, WhatsApp, YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, and sort of all the other social media platforms. Um, but increasingly, what you then see is, whilst you actually give people uncapped connectivity, so also you, you might have additional use in sort of entertainment, mm -hmm. i.e., Netflix and YouTube, um, but it also does enable people to, um, you know, to, to, you know, start taking online courses, which is actually quite a big one. Um, secondly, you see people um, actually sort of doing stuff online that's entrepreneurial. Um, as an example, we had a guy in one of our areas that teaches people abroad how to farm chickens. And okay. in exchange, they pay him in, in Bitcoin. And he'd never be able to actually conduct that without actually having the platform available to him. Um, and then the last one is really people applying for jobs um, and being able to search extensively for jobs, mm. um, which is quite crucial, um, particularly in South Africa, where you've got um, a high youth unemployment rate. Um, but we're also like happy for people to actually just use the internet for entertainment um, and ensure that people are off the streets. They're not getting up to, you know, crime or other criminal yeah, activities. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. So for us, entertainment is good. For people, you know, kids actually being at home and gaming is better than mm. them actually being on the streets mm. and, you know, getting up to no good. So, Yeah, we've got an example of yeah. in Le Montville of a guy that he's it converted a room at his home where he's got the internet and he brings kids in and um, they game. He's got some Xbox and they oh. game in his room. So, you know, for me, like we, we often get this question and... Uh, I always say, right, you know, if I could give you a solution that brings down the crime rate, that brings down substance abuse rate, that brings down alcoholism, that even brings down the birth rate, um, a lot of a lot of these issues, are, there's a lot of, um, in poverty, there's a lot of boredom. And people get up to no good when they're bored and they haven't got that opportunity. So even if, even if it is just that we entertain people, we will do so much good out of that. That the, yeah. the fact that they can educate themselves and, you know, get jobs and all of those other things are almost dwarfed by the benefit of entertainment. Um, and the other point is that we're after equality. OK, mm -hmm. now there's two aspects to equality, equality of price, but also equality of usage. You know, mm -hmm. why, why must the West be allowed to use the Internet for watching football and Netflix and all of their yes. films and all that sort of thing? 
and and Africa, you know, only only for education for Africa. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, yeah, we're we're pretty against that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I completely get that. And and like you said, I mean, if you if you're counting, you know, oh, you know, my internet is about to run out. The, the, you're not going to get to. Yeah, I'm going to go watch that show, or you know, it's just the, the thought of it is stressful. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's very very good comment. And also games nowadays. Honestly, I was like. Again, with the kids, I'm like, games, 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 shouldn't play too many games. Da, 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 da. And I recently had my 10 year old show me what he's playing. And honestly, I, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Yeah. It's a level of like uh, organization, long term, it's some strategic stuff. I was like, honestly, I was ashamed. I was like, okay, you can play longer, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, like that example of the guy, you know. Um, getting those kids off the street, gaming in his home. And, you know, they love it. He's making a bit of money. Um, yeah. You know, it's, uh, this is about what we were saying earlier about laying this platform of connectivity, of uncapped connectivity down and allowing communities to just like innovate their own lives on, on, in a connected world. And um, so, yeah, we, we don't get too much involved in, in what people do, but then a lot of NGOs are now coming to us and then, you know, excited about the areas where we're rolling out because it means like they could have a Zoom call like this to, Absolutely. you know, tutor someone um, or um, whatever it could be. It opens the world up to them and them to the world. And that is really, really important. Um, so. Yeah, what we, our challenge is to keep track of these stories uh, so that, you know, and, and log them all so for our own marketing and, and branding of, of the why, of, of, you know, why connect people on, on to the internet. Absolutely, you should definitely write that book, yeah. That, that'll be amazing. It's interesting, yeah. the lady that ran Diffid in the UK, she, she asked me, you know, have you got any evidence of the, of the economic value of having someone oh, yeah. connected? This was before COVID. Um, I said, no, Laura, and I haven't. But I tell you what, I'll take your mobile for three weeks. And at the end of it, you can write the, the economic <laughs> value Absolutely. of being disconnected. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, dear, three weeks. No, no, like I said, this morning, my cell phone has run out of battery and we were in the car, so... I didn't have the charger, so it took like about one hour without my phone. I was like, oh, that's what's happening in the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm missing yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, you don't want to know what's happening in the world. And Russia's no. invading yeah. Ukraine, and you I don't know, want to know. know. Better off missing out. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I'm actually originally from the Crimea, so that's like. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. So you know all about it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope your family's all right and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that too shall pass, as, as the saying goes, but it's not actually funny at the moment. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that was, no, I had one more question, like, how do you reach, reach your audience? Because obviously, the ones that are not connected, you can't reach them online. But how, how do you go about that? Take yeah, it. Um, happy to take it. Um, any any advice as well is yeah, very so, welcome. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, I think there's multiple ways. Um, so one, um, we generally do a um an extensive community engagement um in person um as and when we actually deploy. Um, we generally try and pick, you know, a, a group of young guys within the community. With the right energy, um, you know, and you know, excited by about having this Wi-Fi available within the community, um, and they'll generally assist us with sort of on-the-ground marketing. Um, so it involves um, sometimes going to sort of local schools. Um, schools are actually a big one. Um, you know, we, we generally like to partner with schools um, by essentially having Wi-Fi originally or, originating from the school, um, and then sort of going on to sort of the rest of the community. Um, we we also create um, you know we we will we'll paint walls with sort of our branding um, have posters around in the, in the community um, that's sort of mm -hmm. the on the ground um, 
marketing. So it's, a, a lot of it is sort of word to mouth. Um, you know, as and when people, you know, got in the community, they suddenly see there's Wi-Fi within the area. Um, and we've got sort of local resellers um, and people that are able to, able to sort of educate them on sort of this product within the community. That's generally sort of the primary method that, method that we use, um, largely because the, the business is genius sort of concentrated in whichever area that we're in. So we're not going to be um, active in a market that um, we don't necessarily have a presence in. So if, for example, we're using something like Google Ads, um, it will advertise on a national sort of scale, which isn't necessarily helpful when you've got sort of a, a specific area within South Africa that we actually focused on. Um, we do have other channels, so you know, sort of our, our website, um, our social media account. Uh, so there's always like posts that we'd put on, on our social media account. Um, we'll send SMSs on a on a sort of when sort of there's a promotion that we're doing. Um, sort of users within that community. Um, so there is a level of social media um, engagement that we do. Um, but I think largely um, we rely on on the ground marketing and on the ground yeah. um, activation. Yeah, and what, once we've done that and we've got some presence on the ground, um, uh, then we give it a healthy dose of free. Um, and, and from giving free Wi-Fi, we can harvest the mobile numbers of everyone that's come on within our system. Um, so there's an authentication okay. based on mobile number, okay? So we know within an area at each access point, we know who's come on. And, and then we'll, mm -hmm. um, you know, set up e e SMSs with them. And we've been working with those users once we get their numbers, once they're on. So mm -hmm. once we're in an area, um, we can then advance it. But mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the hardest thing that we're coming across is how to, how to market it, and it within these, within these um, communities. And I think that's an area where you know we're, we're putting a lot of focus as we roll out is to just to make sure that you know everyone that's in those areas know what's available to them yeah and mm -hmm. yeah maybe just to add so we've also got a sister company which is a which is called villa coin um it's essentially a blockchain business that we use for payments um mm -hmm. but what that does is it essentially allows um particularly the people that um actively sort of use of a product or or, or, or a service to be able to actually sell to other users so mm -hmm. by you actually selling um say you know five data bundles um you're then able to earn sort of a free day for yourself um mm -hmm. so that's actually quite helpful for us because the people that are active on our network then start telling their friends about it um and it mm -hmm. helps get more people onto our network um which is kept which which, which is actually quite a nice way for one for us to actually grow of a user base, mm -hmm. but it's also enables um, sort of local users to um, be quite entrepreneurial um, and mm -hmm. earn um, money or even like free Wi-Fi by actually selling it to yeah, other people. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, I think so. Thanks. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm done with my questions. I'm not going to hold you much longer. Uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to your book and all your stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, me, me too. <laughs> it, it, it'll come out in a couple of years, I think, uh, Tatiana. Oh, no, I'll, I'll follow you on socials to see, see, see what you have to <laughs> keep an eye on you. Maybe in a year. <laughs> I think this is the year where we're going to crack it. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I'll be watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much for your support and we're looking forward to you know, getting ourselves up on your website and getting some, you know, really it's anyone that um, actually wants to feel a bit of fulfillment in life and um, is willing to, you know, um, spend some money to to actually do some serious good. Hmm. You know, and you're looking for investors at, at this point or you believe, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we, we yeah, so we essentially raised a, a seed round in December um, from the Global Innovation Fund, um, but it obviously is quite a capital-intensive business. Um, so, you know, whilst we've got sort of a, a number in mind, we can always take more because there's always a new area that we can go to. There's always more infrastructure we can lay down. There's always more customers we can reach. 
Um, so yeah, we are sort of um, looking at raising a, a additional capital um, to roll out again in sort of these neighborhoods. Um, ideally, it's generally people that are, again, like sort of Tim mentioned, the people that are passionate about doing good, people that are passionate about connectivity, education, entrepreneurship, um, and actually connecting Africa. Okay. All right. That's, that's great. Do you have a place on your website for investors to, to look at something dedicated? Or should they just reach out if anybody like, is interested? I bet if they can reach yeah. out, we, yeah. we, we need to get that yeah. in place. Yeah. yeah. Should be fairly quick for us to add yeah. up. That's um, a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. Definitely look at adding that. Cool. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good day. I'll send the interview and uh, yeah. Thanks, okay. Karen. Good to good to meet you. All right. Good. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for joining us in this episode of Smart Branding Podcast. Feel free to visit smartbranding.com for more information and reach out if you have any suggestions, questions, ideas, or just want to learn more about how a good domain name strategy can help you build a strong and successful brand. See you next time. Oh, 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 oh,